may a difficult time that you're going through be easy for you to walk in which is kind of how i view life any situation that's bad i try to look at the positive in it so it makes it easier for me to go through that situation if that makes any sense last time i spoke to you guys i think i was headed to new york and i didn't even end up vlogging all of that it was the weekend before christmas so that's when i celebrated christmas with my family back at home now it is new year's we are back in florida and i'm going to my boss's house tonight for a new year's eve party so let's get glammed echo lights on I love her. I have to get my foundation from my makeup kit because I never wear foundation. These are all my brushes that I've ever had. And this is my makeup kit. I got this from Amazon. And to be honest, it sucks. Like, don't get it. It's just not practical. It's kind of just like a, like a suitcase and then you could turn it into a backpack as well. This is what it looks like. So I thought my NARS foundation was in here, but I forgot that she totally shattered in one of my trips. I think it's when I last went to Mexico. So I don't have my NARS foundation. So I'm gonna use my Too Faced Born This Way and I'm gonna mix it with my L'Oreal True Match. All right, it's been a minute since I did my makeup, I'm not gonna lie. Like actual full glam makeup. Honestly, I can't even tell you. I don't think this whole year I'm like really trying to recall. It was probably for my birthday of 22. So February of 22. That was the last time I did my makeup like full glam. Cause usually now I just take really good care of my skin and I spot conceal and that's pretty much it. So I want to do a cut crease moment. Something like that. Oh, I love that like that is sick okay so i have a list of questions in front of me and i'm going to answer the ones that i want to so number one what is my age i am 25 i will be 26 this year in two months and one thing about me baby is i love getting older i don't know why most people especially my age or honestly in general i feel like everyone has a fear of getting older i love getting older i love getting older i love the thought of me just being like a grandma in my little rocking chair just talking to all my children and grandchildren and grand grandchildren about the life that i have lived and how i built the life that we have like you know there's people who talk about their grandmas and they're like she was the glue to our family she really held all of us together she really built this family into who we are that's gonna be me like you gonna be talking about grandma Lenny. Like my grandchildren are going to be talking about me and how I glued the family together. I just, I can't wait for that. I mean, I can wait. It's not like I'm rushing to die. <laughs> I'm not rushing to get older or anything. I'm enjoying the journey. But every year that I get older, every year that I celebrate a birthday, I just look at it as, as a blessing and as a step closer to my future self. So for my eye primer, I use the NARS Creamy Concealer in Custard. And I set it with my Laura Mercier powder and this little triangular sponge okay what is your zodiac sign i am a pisces i am a february pisces february 21st and do i fit my zodiac signs reputation i think i do i feel like i act like a true pisces i'm very nice very spiritual very in tune with my emotions and empathetic to the people around me like if someone is feeling anxious like i feel anxious if someone's feeling happy i feel like i grasp onto people's emotions very well and i just want everyone to be happy and love life there are some advantages and disadvantages advantages to that but i definitely feel like i fit the pisces stereotype and that is a blessing and a curse honey now my big three is i am a pisces sun a sagittarius moon and a gemini rising talk about a big three i love my big three i feel like it describes me so well i see my characteristics in all three of them definitely mostly my pisces when i'm under the influence 
I feel like my Sagittarius comes out. Very carefree, very highly spirited, very independent, a little feisty. I can see that. And then my Gemini comes out when I am in a social setting. Geminis are very good at camouflaging. So whatever room they're in, they adapt to the energy in the room. And I very much feel that way whenever I'm around people, which is a good and a bad thing because you should never try to fit into somebody else's mold. Like you should be the energy in the room you should be influencing the energy in the room but personally i don't like to take up a lot of space so i'm going off of everybody's vibe where are you from this is a very long story so i was born in rio piedras puerto rico but both of my parents are fully dominican i don't know exactly where my parents are from but i do know that it's near santiago and san francisco macorís but it seems like i have family everywhere well, my story is i was born in puerto rico i visited dr a lot when i was young i only remember tidbits though and then we moved from puerto rico to washington heights new york i lived in washington heights for I want to say about two years because I think I was there from kindergarten to second grade and then second grade we moved to the Bronx and I went to PS 63 from grade two to grade five and grade five I moved to New Jersey in a little town called Belleville, New Jersey and that is pretty much where I grew up or where I have a lot of my memories and even though I hated it when I lived there now that I don't live there anymore I do realize that it was a cute little quaint town that I grew up in I was like 25 minutes away from the city with no traffic it was fun I would get to go to the city often even though the city's not my favorite place to be at just because I am not a hustle and bustle type of girl so after COVID hit in 2020 I really wanted to move out of Jersey. I just felt like it wasn't my home. It wasn't my place where I wanted to grow. So I decided to move where I am now, which is Tampa, Florida. And I absolutely love it here. I feel at home. I feel at peace. I love that today is December 31st and it's like 55 degrees outside. While back home, it's like almost 30. Even though the summers are pretty brutal here, I would not change it for anything. I absolutely love it here. So I'm switching between my bronzer which is this Fenty Beauty Sun Stalker in Caramel Cutie and that's pretty much what I have on my crease and the darker brown is from this Madison Beer palette by Morphe and it's this one right here you can take any brown that you have so I kind of like how this is looking so we are going to cut the crease and continue blending afterward I like to put a little concealer in the back of my hand like that and let's start cutting this crease what is the color of your hair? Well, I have a million colors in here right now. When I was young, I was definitely a Goldilocks blonde. But as I've gotten older, my natural hair color has gotten darker and darker. So now I would say it's like a dirty blonde. And I just add some natural looking highlights into it. But I like to keep my natural color as much as I can and just add accents with the highlights. I think I have to cut it up a bit higher, but it looks so good. I don't want to mess it up. I'm like trying to think. I'm going to do the other eye and then we'll see. What color are your eyes? My eyes are green and I got them from my mama. Actually, my mom and my dad. My dad had these beautiful yellow hazel eyes. They were like a honey brown yellow absolutely stunning and my mom has green eyes i actually did an ancestry dna and it shows that i am from spain and africa sorry if i keep blocking the camera by the way i'm just trying to focus on cutting this crease but my mom is milk white and my dad is black so i would say that the spaniard side came from her and the african side came from him and i came out literally smack in the middle of both of their skin complexions. While my one brother is a little bit lighter than me and the other one is, I was gonna say a little bit darker, but he's a lot darker. <laughs> All right, I have to put this down here because I have to tug on this a little bit. 
Cutting a crease is so nerve wracking. Oh yeah, I'm definitely going to have to bring this one up a little bit. Do you see what I'm seeing right now? And it looks like it's just in the middle right here. I don't have to do much to the outsides because the outsides actually look a little bit parallel. And just like eyebrows with creases, it's the same thing. They're cousins, not twins. Plus nobody is going to hyper analyze like, oh, this wing is bigger than the other one. Trust me, nobody really cares about you that much. What is your relationship status? I am in a relationship. We've been together for two years now and I like to keep that part of my life private. What's your favorite TV show? Hmm, that's a little hard to answer. I don't really watch that much TV, so I'm like, do I have a favorite TV show? I mean, I can tell you what I'm currently watching. I love Dubai Bling. Dubai Bling, Selling Sunset. Honestly, anything that has really good fashion, oh. I'm all for it. Fashion and a little bit of drama. Again, I don't really watch TV, so when I do, it's like I'm binging it. And I like to watch like those type of reality show, quote unquote, because it's not real. It's not an actual reality, it's all scripted. But it's like trash TV. Like I just put it on in the background while I'm cleaning or doing my makeup or whatever. It's just fun to watch. Okay, so that looks pretty even to me. So I'm just gonna blend the eyeshadow out a little bit. But to be honest, it looks so good. I don't wanna keep touching it. Cause then I'm gonna keep touching it and then I'm gonna ruin it. So let's just leave it. <laughs> I'm actually gonna go into the palette, take a little bit of this and put it on my lid just to brighten up the lid a little bit and set the concealer that we just put. Real Housewives of Miami, that show is fire. Me and my friend, we always make fun of Marisol. I por favor. I love Marisol. I want her to be my tia. How tall are you? I better say my five foot two ass down. I only said that on the Cassie song. I said, I'm like five two. Then 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 then. Scores is high too. I only said that because it rhymed. Durr. I'm not five foot two. I'm five foot three. Three. No, but I'm actually 5'2". Honestly, I may be pushing 5'3". I don't know. I went for a checkup last year in January. I'm due for another one. I'll update you in like two weeks. <laughs> I did not put primer on. I mean, this is what you get when you don't do your makeup for two years. I forgot that I have to put primer on. Now, when I do other people's makeup, cause you might be thinking like, but you do other people's makeup professionally. Yeah, but when you're doing somebody else's makeup and you know that like it's their big day, I don't ever forget moisturizer, primer, foundation. You know, I never forget any of that just because like I'm in the mode. But when it's my makeup like this and then I have to talk at the same time, yeah, it's a little hard. By the way, this is my Morphe M406 brush. It's a little stippling brush, I love it. How much do you weigh? Damn, don't you know that you're not supposed to ask a woman's weight? Or her age, really, like, just straight violating. <laughs> Nobody's forcing me to answer these questions but myself. So I am currently a whopping 140. Five. But honestly, I love my body. I love how my body's looking. My goal in life for a long time was to get to 130. And then once I got there and I saw that I had no butt, flat, like back to legs. No, it, was, it wasn't like that. I, I had a little bubble butt. But when I'm thicker like I am now, my butt just looks so good. She looked juicy. So to be honest, I like being thicker because it just, it works with my body type. Honestly, I just have to start doing abs or get into Pilates or something. And I promise you, I'm gonna be snatched. I wanna go on a whole like health journey. Well, not health journey, cause I feel like I eat pretty healthy, but like fitness journey. I wanna go on a whole fitness journey and like really transform my body into the full potential that I know it could be. By the way, my Too Faced foundation is in sand because I have an olive undertone. So I really love the way that this foundation looks on my skin. And then I mixed it with the L'Oreal True Match in W5, sand beige. And the reason why I mix them is because this is the Born This Way matte and it's really mattifying. And I kind of want like a glowier look instead of like so matte, but I am a really oily girl. So I like to go with the back of my brush like this and just dot wherever I feel like I need a little bit more extra coverage. Honestly, it feels so weird to wear foundation. Because again, I don't, I don't really wear foundation. I do love this stippling brush though. My skin looks amazing. I definitely like to bring it down. 
Now I like to take my Real Techniques Expert Face Brush and just pat everything in place just to make sure it don't move, honey. This is not going nowhere. All right, let's do concealer because I'm looking sickly. Now for my eye primer, I used custard and regularly I use ginger under my eyes when I'm just doing like a simple look when I'm not going fully glam. But since today it's full glam, I'm going to use custard in the beginning of my eye and then I'm going to jot some ginger as I go back. What's your favorite song? At the moment, anything by Carol G because I just love her. I love her so much. I love how genuine and endearing she is. She's just an icon. But honestly, a song that has been nonstop, it's just like a feel good, ethereal sounding song to me. It just, it sounds like otherworldly when I listen to it. It's One of Your Girls by Troye Sivan. I love that song. Every time that I listen to it, I feel like it tickles the right spots of my brain. Just the musical genius behind it. I love that song. Actually, just listening to that little snippet, his music has the same vibe as Mac Miller. And I remember being so obsessed with that Mac Miller swimming album. And then he passed away like two months later. <laughs> R.I.P. I love Mac Miller. But Mac played a lot with those like, whatever that is. Mac Miller did a lot of that. Those like sound waves and frequencies. I think those parts are what tickle my brain really nice. So yeah, that song has definitely been on repeat for me. Who's your favorite artist? I already said. I mean, right now, to be honest, it's pretty basic. Carol G, like, come on, y'all. Carol G is just that girl right now. Like, you can't even tell me different. And if you try to tell me different, you're hating. Like, you're just, you're hating on the queen. I am so happy that she is having her moment, especially being a Latina and that people from all parts of the world, all parts of life enjoy her music. She is, she's doing big things and I love her. I love how genuine she is. I have really bad smile lines, so I pat them down, honey. I like to mattify my whole face because again, I'm an oily girl. And today, obviously, we're gonna be up to the wee hours of the night. So I'm gonna need all the protection I could get. By the way, when I break out into little accents, it's just me being funny. I got a country accent. I could have a British accent. I could have a Spanish accent. Australian accent, eh? I didn't say they were good. I'm not saying I'm good at doing accents. I'm just saying I break out to them <laughs> every once in a while. Honestly, I, I blame TikTok. The TikTok girls, you know? I love that the whole world is connected through TikTok. Like, who's your best friend? I feel like I have many true friends through different walks of life. I would say my ultimate best friend right now at this moment is probably my boyfriend because I talk to him 24 seven and we just know each other's deepest, darkest secrets. Now from back home, I have my long-term friend from when I was in elementary school. Her name is Jalissa. Hey girl. I love her so much. We are the type of friends that we probably like won't talk for like three to six to nine months at a time. But every time that we get back together, it's like time hasn't stopped. Like we don't skip a beat. I love her. That's that's my sister for real. Then I have my friends Tommy and Emily, which I went to school with them, but we were not close in high school, like at all. That came after COVID actually. Me and Emily were in the same cosmetology program and me and Tommy, we went to elementary school together. When I came to Jersey in grade five, we were in the same elementary school. But again, we just never got really close until COVID happened and we started to hang out a lot. And now those are my besties. And now since I've moved to Tampa, I've made one truly amazing friend. I love her so much, her name is Desiree. She is just so humble, so genuine, so true to her core. She's so caring and giving to others. Her also, it's like we, we don't really keep up with each other that much, or I guess we do. We'll talk like every two weeks and we'll fill each other in as to like what's happening. 
in our lives. I am so happy to have her in my life. And then I have my work besties, who I feel like we literally live together because I'm at work 24 seven. Well, not really, but it feels that way. And that's Shirley and Kat. And we are just funny together. We laugh so much. I would consider them my besties as well. What are your insecurities? So I tried not to feed into my insecurities just because it took me a long time to get rid of my insecurities. And you can't fully get rid of your insecurities or you can actually, you can come to a point where you just don't care no more, but you still won't escape the obsession that you once had with certain insecurity. For me personally, it's my fupa, my little belly. That I would say is my biggest insecurity. But again, I don't really feed into it. I don't let it get to me. I don't let it hold power over me as much as it's had for honestly my whole life since I was a teenager. And I look back at pictures of when I was a teenager and I'm like, I was so skinny. Like I had such a beautiful body and in the moment I hated it so much. But I feel like that's something that we, a lot of us girls have experienced because of social media. So I try to rewire my brain in the fact that it's, I'm not the only one that went through that, you know? It was a social media thing. Like social media just made it seem like you need to have the perfect body, the perfect pictures, the perfect poses, the perfect background. And it really deteriorated a lot of little girls' self image and self worth. And I know that I'm not the only one that went through that. So I think that's what makes me feel a lot better about it. And why now I kind of, I don't feed into the insecurities. Like I know that I had them and I still, 50% they're there, but I just don't feed into them and I, I don't let them get to me. I know that there's something that I could do about it. I could start working out. Am I going to? <laughs> I am, I am, okay, 2024, new year, new me. Stop playing with me, stop playing with me. What's your dream date? April 25th, because it's not too hot, not too cold, all you need is a light jacket. I've been waiting to be asked that. I crack myself up. <laughs> no, my dream date, again, I'm a Pisces, so I care about connection. I don't really care about materialistic things. So honestly, a nice dinner in a nice restaurant. We both get dressed up really nicely. You know, he picks me up in his nice car and we just talk the whole time over a bottle of wine or two. That's my dream date, but I've had my dream date. <laughs> but a crazy dream date is my boyfriend one day calling me and he's like, Pack your bags. You have a flight at 6 p.m. Make sure you're there by 4.30 because it's international and I'll see you at our destination. Click. Now that's a dream date, okay? Three words to describe yourself. By the way, I'm using my custom Anastasia Beverly Hills palette and I'm using this brown right here. So her wing is a little bit more like more smudged out, but because my eyes are so little, I like having a very defined wing. Anyways, three words to describe myself. I like to think that I'm sweet, question mark? No, I feel like I'm, I'm very sweet. I'm very kind to everyone that I meet or anyone around me really. So I would say kind, kind is the first word. The second one would be, I think I'm witty. I like witty. And a third one, airheaded, AF. I forget a lot of things <laughs> in the middle of a conversation. I'll disassociate. That's the Pisces though. Yeah, I'm, I'm kind of airheaded sometimes. I'm not gonna lie. I can't even lie about it, to be honest. I've just really like come to terms with it. So I'm gonna use my Anastasia contour kit color in Fawn and my contour brush. And I'm just going to lightly put this in places that naturally have a shadow to give definition back to my face. I like to put this by my hairline. Damn, that's a harsh line. By the way, I dyed my baby hairs the other day and I just love the way that my hairline looks when I do that. So because I'm naturally a dirty blonde, the hairs around my face get super, super light and my eyebrows too. If I hadn't dyed my eyebrows the other day, 
it would look like I have no eyebrows right now. So I like dyeing my baby hairs because my forehead looks less big. So I'm gonna do my eyebrows now with my NYX eyebrow pencil in ash brown. Dog or cat? So I am a dog person. I have a little Pomeranian at home back in Jersey. She is my pride and joy. I cannot wait for my mom to move down here with me when she retires so I can have my doggy back. But for now, my dog is up in Jersey. Also because I work so much that I can't have a dog at home, it would just be unfair to the animal. And two, because my dog just keeps my mom so much company that if I took them away from each other, that would be so selfish. I guess I should answer that question. That question hasn't been brought up. What is your job? So I am a full-time hairstylist. I specialize in hand-tied extensions and lived in color. And I've been doing hair for almost eight years now. I love my job. I love what I do. I love making people feel beautiful. And honestly, even though I'm pursuing YouTube now, I don't think I'll ever stop doing hair. I'll probably minimize my days of being in the salon, but I don't think I'll ever fully stop doing hair. I love doing hair so much. So with the little bit leftover concealer that's left on this brush, I just like to clean up the bottom of the brows so everything looks really crisp. Okay, so I'm gonna do the inner corner cat eye and I just like to really dry up the area. I always tear up when I'm doing my makeup. And now I'm gonna take my same angled brush, dip it into the same brown. I'm gonna try to get real close and personal to you. Ooh, that one came out smooth. Purr. So I'm gonna take this contour color again and I'm going to contour my nose. Book or movie? If you would have asked me this question literally four weeks ago, I would have said movie for sure. But on my trip to go see my family for Christmas, I read the most amazing book I've ever read. That now I'm a book girly. And it was all because this girl on Instagram said that you guys really need to read this book. And I've been trying to get my reading kick back for a while now. And I was like, you know what? This girl said this book was good, so let me buy it. And I bought it. And girl, let me tell you, that book was 10 out of 10. It's called The Way I Used to Be. And disclaimer, there is essay in it. So if you're sensitive to that topic, then it's probably not for you. I can resonate with that book a lot. And I feel like a lot of young girls have. So yeah, that was such a good book. I recommend 10 out of 10. I like to pat it with the foundation brush a little bit so it's not as harsh. And then go over it slightly with the remainder of the product on the brush. I love giving myself like a cute little button nose. Now I'm gonna do just a little bit of blush. I like my Milani Luminoso. And I like to put it from the corner of my eye up. And I only do upward strokes to lift the face up. This blush just looks good literally with any look on any skin tone. And then I'm going to do literally like two passes in the front. Now I'm just gonna tap it once and tap a little bit on my nose just enough to hide the contour a little bit. Morning person or night owl? So I feel like I used to be a morning person, heavy. I loved working out in the morning. I loved having tea and a cup of coffee in the morning. That was my jam. And then after COVID, I was a night owl. But because of all of the events that COVID put us through, that's why I became a night owl. But recently, my hours have changed. And I think 2024, I'm definitely going to be a morning person. Or at least I hope so. But I definitely see me as being more of a morning person. Way more than a night owl. I feel so much better when I go to sleep early and wake up early than I do when I stay up late and wake up later. Do you have any tattoos? Yes. I have four tattoos. Let me glue my lash on real quick. Anyways, the question was about tattoos, but the next one is about piercings, and I'm just gonna show you that because I only have my ears pierced. I don't have anything else pierced. I'm like thinking like as if I have other piercings. Like, no, I always wanted a belly piercing, but I never got one, and honestly, I don't want one anymore. So I only have these piercings. Let me put on my lash real quick. Because my eyes are smaller, I like to put the outer corner a little bit above where my lash line is so it can lift the eye. It doesn't fully meet right there. As you can see, there's like a little gap. 
So that's my little trick for my girls who have small eyes. So I have five piercings over here. I have three on my lobe and then two cartilage. And on this side, I have my, what is this called, the tragus? And the three on my earlobes. My earrings are full of foundation. I'm gonna take the brown liner that I did and just go on top of the lash to hide any bit of glossiness from the glue. For the lips, I think I'm just gonna do my signature everyday lip. And this is the Morphe Lip Pencil in Bite Me. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. I was gonna do a, a red lip to do something different. It looks so weird with just my bottom lip drawn. Like, but I feel like it would just be too much. This looks so good. I forgot to show you me applying the highlight and I'm also going to apply my Urban Decay All Nighter. Ooh, girl. These are my maybe stockings for the night. They have little sparkles on it. I don't think I'm gonna wear these though. I'm just putting more white in my eyeshadow because it makes it look really crisp and clean. Now we're gonna crimp the hair. I put my hair into these two little braids and that kind of makes the hair look crimped anyway. Ooh, I gotta look good, I'm not gonna hold you. I'm gonna put a little oil in it. Honestly, this looks so good. I don't even think I need to crimp it. Do you see that volume? Don't mind my little braid. <laughs> I'm actually doing a half up, half down look. I'm gonna do that and then see what pieces need to be crimped. Sure. The hair is slayed. Guys, I'm not gonna lie. I look like a bad bitch. <laughs> what? Like, you thought I was feeling you? So back to the tattoo. I have four tattoos. I have this one on my arm, which I got it tatted because it was the symbol of the last salon that I worked at in Jersey. Like this was the logo of the salon. So everyone that worked there, we all have some type of swirl on us, but it also means the journey of life. So obviously the center is where you're born and then it's like the journey of life. I love it so much and it's so dainty and cute. Can't even see it. Then I have one on the other side. This one says Avia Paravia. I don't know if you can see it right there. I actually, this is the most recent one I got. I got this one in Costa Rica and it's basically Latin for may difficult paths be easy to walk. And that kind of goes for everything in life. May a difficult time that you're going through be easy for you to walk in, which is kind of how I view life, which is like any situation that's bad, I try to look at the positive in it. So it makes it easier for me to go through that situation, if that makes any sense. I heard it in a TV show or a movie or something, and I had it written on my mirror for a long time. So I would see it every day. Every morning I would wake up, I would see it, and I would recite it to myself. And it's just something that means so much to me that I decided to get it tatted when I was in Costa Rica. It cost me like 50 bucks. Then I have this little palm tree. This was my first tattoo when I was 19. I have a little palm tree on my ankle. Isn't he so cute? That's my first tattoo. And I have a little Pisces symbol behind my ear. Can you see that? I don't even know if you can see that. I have to get her touched up. But it's also in the form of an H, which is the beginning letter to my last name, which I also feel like it's an honor to my father as well, or our family name. Because when I got it, he was still alive. But I think it's to honor like our family name. So that one has a double meaning. And then I have the tattoo that's behind my arm. And this is the only tattoo that I don't say I regret it. I don't regret the tattoo itself and what it means to me and for the time of my life that I got it what I was going through it definitely helped me get past that time of my life like this tattoo has so much meaning but what my biggest regret is that I got it too big this tattoo is huge and I wanted it to be dainty and small and it's just not so my biggest dilemma right now which is why I haven't messed with it yet is do I want to remove half of the tattoo or get other tattoos around it and get like a half sleeve to kind of balance everything out. 
let me show you from the front like you know it doesn't really look like i have any crazy big tattoos because they're all dainty and then i turn around <laughs> And this is my woman. I just call her my woman. So it is a naked woman hugging herself with all these beautiful flowers on top. So as you can see, she's pretty big. Like it's the size of my whole back of my arm. And she looks lonely back there. Like there's nothing else back there. When I'm standing straight, this is what she looks like. So originally I went to Mexico and I saw this girl and she had, I think it was like a pinup girl on her arm and she was probably like this big and it was so cute, so dainty line work, right? And that's the idea that I had for this girl. Just make her cute, you know, line work with the flowers, her hugging herself and really small. When I went to the tattoo artist, I kind of told her that I eventually wanted to get like a half sleeve, which now I'm iffy about. I'm just not in that phase of my life anymore where I want a bunch of tattoos. And she gave me the idea of doing her big because when I did the half sleeve, everything else would kind of encompass her. And I followed her advice because she's a professional. And even when she put it on as like, you know, when they do the, the mock-up stencil, and it's like blue and she puts it on and I looked at it in the mirror. I was like, I love it, which I do love it. Don't get me wrong. I do love it. It's just, I wish she wasn't so big because I'm not getting a half sleep anymore. At least I don't think so. I haven't really put a lot of thought into it, which is why I haven't done anything about it. So I'm still up in the air. It's either remove her legs or add more. So tell me guys what you think. I just want to remove her legs. So it would only be this top part of the tattoo. And then I feel like it wouldn't it wouldn't bother me as much because I do love that I love her. I love the tattoo. Again, I just wish she was a little bit smaller. So I don't want to remove her completely. And if I did, like it's not gonna look good anyway, because everybody knows when you laser something off, like it just doesn't look good. So I was thinking of just lasering off her legs, but that's nothing for the near future, to be honest. So I'm just leaving her alone. That's one, two, three, four, five. Wait, one, two, three four, five, that's five tattoos actually. So I have five tattoos. <laughs> Do I want any more? Yes. They're all going to be dainty and discreet and cute. Actually, hold on, I have six tattoos. I have one more. Actually, this is my most recent tattoo. I have these little koi fishes. How can I forget about these? I literally got this probably like three, four months ago. Aren't they so cute? So this represents yin and yang as well as Pisces. So I have six tattoos. <laughs> Can't believe I went from four to five to six. But again, I love the line work. I love how dainty and discreet it is. Like again, you can't really tell that I have tattoos until you see the big one in the back. Which talking about insecurities, I am low key insecure about that tattoo. I feel like people who have tattoos and know about tattoos, they'll look at my arm and they'll be like, that looks really unfinished. So that kind of makes me insecure when I'm wearing sleeveless things or even if I'm wearing like a half sleeve and you only see her legs. I just know that to people in the tattoo community, they probably look at it and they're like, that looks really unfinished, which makes me kind of insecure. But at the same time, it's like, I don't care. It's like the same thing about my fupa. Like, yeah, I'm like low key insecure about it, but at the same time, I don't care. I sat down to try and make a reel for my 23 recap and it was an epic fail because I couldn't fit all of the clips in to one video on Instagram. So I went on another app to try and fit all of my clips and the reel can be 25 seconds long. And in the middle of editing my clips, I noticed that the video is 28 seconds long and I still have like half of the year to go. So I gave up on that. I'll just finish it at the party. I love this necklace. So this is the jewelry that I'm wearing for tonight, as well as this bracelet. And for my rings, I like this stack a lot. I do have a little thumb ring, how cute. So adorable. So I'll show you guys what I'm wearing. This shirt is from Amazon. I love the sleeves, how they're like belled out a little bit. And of course the decolletage. So cute. And this cargo skirt. I honestly completely forgot where I got the skirt. And I'm going to be wearing these long booties with it. Just imagine them. Thank you so much for getting ready with me. Happy New Year and I'll see you next year. Bye.